tell you now. Look, inflation is in the rear view. This is the last time we should talk about inflation. It's over. It's a wrap. Okay. I oh, agree. I, that's good to know. I agree that's with right. you. I agree. So when, Tuesday, when you're talking to Vecchio, you can tell him, look, I don't want to hear inflation anymore because Jamal said it's over. <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't I don't get into those like Vecchio wars because like, you know, he's got an answer for everything. Oh, he, yeah, he does. He has it. He, Ooh, I'm telling. He has that, an answer. You ask him, what are you going to do without Aaron Rodgers? He won't know what to what to do. He's, yeah. he's still up. Yeah, no, he's still broken down over that. But other than that, like if you ask him anything, any economic question, he's got he's he comes well prepared. Let's put it that way. Oh, of course. That's all we have on the whole network. Let's move to the next slide. But I'm telling you, the Aaron Rodgers thing, he's still broke now, man. He's 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 jealous of a guy, so just be be delicate with him right now, okay? It's hurting. Um, mixed CPI and PPI reports, they were met with cheers by the market. And it basically seems as though we're gonna pause if you look at the Fed CME watch tool. 97% uh, chance we don't make a move and uh, for next week. And then for November, I think it's about a 60-something percent chance we don't make a move. So they may they may pause. It, they're definitely going to pause probably next week. If they don't, I'm telling you, it might be some market volatility we could see. But they're probably going to pause next week. Um, whether or not we get another one in November, not sure. So they may continue to still tighten. But um, for now, it, it looks like we're going to sit and pat. ECB hike rates this week, 10 consecutive time. And uh, they're up to 4% now. Different situation there. E Eurozone is not looking that great. And so uh, they had to make a hard decision, but they had to do it. They might be done as well, especially if we're done. I'm sure they will be. Apple iPhone launches, man, <sighs> they're just boring now. I mean, they really are. They are. They need to do something cool. <sighs> I, you know, it's just ridiculous. And I just saw something this morning that, you know, I was th I'm was i thinking about getting an iPhone. I just saw this morning that there's a del delays on the top end phone, like two to three weeks for one and like four to five weeks for another. So no, don't give up your flip phone, man. You're one of the last remaining flip phone guys. <laughs> I'll let you have uh, you a player. <laughs> yeah, you are a player. Don't give up that flip phone. Uh, yeah. You know, not only the true players have the flip. Uh, Google is facing this potential landmark case. You guys heard about this? What do you think? I mean, it's it's interesting, right? Like just to set you up, the landmark, the, the case from several years ago with Microsoft with the whole, they were packaging Internet Explorer within their, their, their yeah. uh, software and it was unfair. It's so interesting now we're at a point now where Google has packaged a lot of different phones with the the uh, search engine and everything is Googleable. So, what do you think about this? Could it be interesting or what? Um, I, again, I did. I had this discussion on on Wednesday with Dylan. It was one of our topics, and and I, my argument here is that this is um, this is a money grab. Uh, then it this is way more a money grab than it is something that's like you know that it's fundamentally an antitrust case. I think there is a huge. And I, I'm going to give you my. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it in a very short summary. The tax code, the corporate tax code in this country is broken and they can't fix it. So rather than try to fix the corporate tax code, it is way easier to go after the richest companies in America through um, antitrust litigation and settlement. I, I know it's going to sound like it's far-fetched and crazy, but it's way easier to get you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 billion dollars from Google in a in a litigation settlement than it is going through the complexity of changing the tax code. And I really believe that that's what this is. And it is in multiple places. And it's not just Google, it's Google Meta, you know, it's, it's all the big players. And I think it's, it's, you know, listen, you do what you got to do. You know, like you can't get bipartisan agreement to change tax code. So you have to level the playing field some other way. I think this is what it is. Yeah, well said, well said. And it's interesting you mentioned Meta. I was looking the other day at both of these companies. Google has bought up about two, 256 companies since 2001. And uh, Meta's bought about 100 over probably a lesser time frame, obviously, since it's only been public or not even public. It's only been a company since 2004. So that's what these, these companies do, right? They go up and gobble up other companies that could potentially either help make them better or be a threat. So. There's, there's no there's when when interest rates are zero or now they're not zero anymore but when interest rates were zero for that entire period of time you just talked about um there's no such thing as what do you do with your money there there are no you know um there are no accretive deals out there so the only thing you can 
especially at the where these guys are trading. So the only thing you can do is buy innovation or or refund to your shareholders. I mean, there's nothing else you can do. You can't, you know, at some point you stop buying your own stock back. So you can special dividend your own shareholders or you can, um, you know, or, or you can buy innovation. And I think what Google does with respect to buying innovation is the smartest thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oil uh, touches 90 for the first time since Nove, and it's heading for its third consecutive weekly gain. Been on the rise, as you guys know. And then VIX has closed below 19 for 73 consecutive days. Let's move ahead to the slide portion of the show, uh, where we look at a couple of different charts. NASDAQ reached an all-time high uh, against, is, is up at all-time highs against the Russell. Uh, of course, this has been the trade that we've talked about most of the year. Continues to make moves, and uh, I'm not sure what turns it around unless uh, something happens tech-wise. I don't think it's going to be yields anymore because I don't know how much higher we're going in yields. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Bullshit. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Oh, man, talked about ECB the other day. Of course, it was a big move down the euro. Euro's heading for its ninth straight week of losses against the dollar. The euro is in the green there, thus the words are in the green. Longest since the inception of the euro. You can see the blue line there is dollar in the form of UUP is making uh, its move. This is the year-to-date changes uh, currencies. What do you got to say about it? I mean, I... I, I... The only currency we have position on right now is the yen. We're choking on it a little bit. We're we're obviously a l long yen, um, but um, I, IV rank is really low, so it's hard to sell premium in any currency right now. But we're a little we're long yen, um, and I think the dollar is um, way over bought here. So I I don't like the dollar. Thanks for asking answering that question I, before I even asked it. <laughs> so <Let's move. laughs> head to the next slide. Uh, VIX futures curve, man, strong contango. A uh, little bit of uh, premium, actually, between. Uh, so, of course, we got September here expires this coming next week, Wednesday, which is a good point to make. If those of you who want to try and play volatility for the Fed meeting, um, which I don't expect to be any, but maybe you do, the September is going to expire. The, the U contract is going to expire Wednesday morning. So don't bother buying that one. You would be interested potentially in trading the October one, which is the V expiration and maybe those options along with that. All right. So keep that in mind. Um, a little bit of premium between uh, the OC futures and VIX index, about a little under three points and a little under four points for Nove. But we're in strong contango. Not a whole lot happening right now. Yeah, it's really everybody's looking at this and I probably got three or four emails this week about, you know, why aren't we loading up on volatility here? And, you know, you just you just said it yourself. I mean, the, the spread is, you know, like three points. It's crazy expensive to buy volatility here and hold it. Um, I mean, I think they're making it attractive and it's it's gotten to level where it is attractive to buy, you know, something like a VIX. But the problem is. The cost to carry, you know, it's just it's so damn expensive that I don't think I don't see how you can do it. And Tom, I don't look at it as being expensive in the future. I look at it as being very cheap right now. Like a 19 VIX, 18 VIX, 17 VIX, that's low end of mid of, of mean. I mean, I know, but where we are the, right the, now. Your timing has to be perfect though, because if you're off by one month. The whole problem yeah, with buying dead. VIX, you're if, you're, if you're off by one month, you're dead. Because if, I, if, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a viable long term. No, no, no. I, I'm agreeing with you. I don't think it yeah. is either. I, I, but I get a lot of emails from people say, how can you not buy volatility here? And well, I get the emails that volatility is. Look at this. They're they're looking for a big move in the market. You know, come you know 2024. I go, no, nah, not really. That, that's just the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm unknown. I, I understand. It's it's a very hard index. It's a very hard product to understand. It's just challenging. That's all. Yep. But yeah, it's hard to buy volatility. No matter what we think, it's hard to buy. Let's go next yep. slide. Move to the next slide. Uh, uh, last uh, chart here. Automakers just went on strikes. The Lantis Ford GM. Right now, IVR is fairly low. I think some of them are down two percent ahead of. Uh, the market, but uh, I feel like this could be an interesting thing. They say this could cause a loss of, of $5 billion within a week uh, for this and probably other implications to cars and used cars and maybe even eventually if you want to take it there, um, some uh, some economic issues. But this is an interesting thing, I think, to keep an eye on. Okay. Move ahead to the next slide. 
So, uh, Arm went public yesterday. Uh, they just got, they bought, they took it private at 32 bill. Comes about out hot at $60 billion. Real interesting situation there. New ETF, Triple QI, looks to take advantage of zero DTE options. Me and Dr. Data are going to talk about this on my show today, 145 Central. We'll talk about it in depth and see what's interesting or not there. 210 spread, 313 consecutive days in the negative. Long streak since 1980. Ugh. Yeah, nothing to be said there. Um, triple witching expiration today. Four trillion worth of, of derivatives. Apparently, this is the biggest September expiration, but you know, we're trading more options these days. So that, that statistic doesn't really surprise me. Uh, FOMC meeting, of course, coming up on Wednesday, September 20th. September 20th, more than likely, they're not going to do a thing. And uh, research this week, September 11th, market measure, uh, market measure, excuse me, understanding risk in low implied volatility environments. That's all I got. All right, my friend, we're going to take a quick 90 second break so we can come back to the opening bell. We got about 90 ish seconds. Thank you, my friend. Peace.